Hello, Hokies. I'm Tech Sideline founder Will Stewart. Today we have the first guest to return for a second podcast, none other than head football coach Brent Pry. The weird thing is we're not going to ask him about football. We are billing this as a Get to Know Coach Pry podcast, and we're going to hang out and talk about all kinds of stuff, family, cars, music, pop culture, TV, movies, and yeah, we'll probably talk a little bit about football. It's all coming up next on the Tech Sideline podcast. Okay, welcome back in. We've got Coach Pry for a half hour, so I'm going to dispense with the sponsor plugs and the pleas for likes and subscribes, but hit that anyway and get right to it. Coach, for the second time, welcome into the show. Glad to be here, guys. Love coming in the studio. Got a good-looking facility here. Yeah, appreciate that. So last time you were on, uh, I wasn't part of the interview crew. I was sitting over there, and I remember you saying, when are you going to start asking the hard questions? (laughs) And this is not that kind of podcast where yeah. we're once again going to uh, lob, lob softballs at you and have some fun. So I do have a f- football question, though. When does practice start? We've been getting asked that one a lot. So the guys report Monday, which sounds crazy nowadays because they're basically here all summer. Yeah, Monday, August 1st. Monday, August 1st, and then practice starts on the 2nd. Uh, getting right into it. And do you have media day set yet? All right, We do. I don't know that off the top of my head, <laughs> but it is set. As, as much as you love recruiting, you got into this to coach football. And now you got to be glad to, you know, not necessarily glad to put recruiting behind you to a certain extent, but actually get out there and start coaching again. Yeah, you know, it's, it is good. I, I don't want to make it sound like it's not. You do get a lot more focus and attention on the game that we all love. Yeah. But recruiting is 365 days a year. Yeah. I mean, you just you can't ever shut it off. Uh, it's 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 our lifeblood. It's too much of what we do, and um, you know, there's always something that can be done or needs to be done on the recruiting front. Whether it's a couple of messages, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a Zoom, whether it's a couple of letters, whatever it is, there's always something. But uh, you know, this is this is what we all love to do as coaches is really engulf yourself in football Um, yeah this will be your first time with your entire team including the true freshman correct yeah Yeah, so we've got everybody in place um we've got one or two staff members kind of still matriculating but um i'm excited you know to to get everybody going and the thing i always like about about preseason camp is we're not as hands-on as the strength staff so, you know, they're doing all this work and all these hours of agilities and running and training. And guys grow the most and develop the most physically in the summertime. So already just being back from vacation and being in the building, seeing some of the, you know, the bodies that have changed. And um, it just gets you excited because – Every year, there's one, two, hopefully more guys that emerge that maybe you weren't counting on and had a great summer and have positioned themselves to potentially help the team. Um, So it's an exciting time. So in researching this, trying to look up some personal stuff on you, I didn't know this. You were born on April 1st? April 1st. So, So is that annoying or is that fun? I, you know, it's fun. I'll tell you this. People don't forget your birthday, <laughs> yeah. which is cool. Yeah. But, uh, you know, my father was off at uh, Farham Junior College and uh, got the phone call from his from my, my mother's mother that my mom had gone into labor. And uh, his roommates had answered the phone, and he wouldn't come to the phone. You know, they're like, hey, it, Kathy's going into labor. And he's like, no, 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 no April Fool's joke on me today. <laughs> you know, so, but, uh, yeah, so it, it's cool. So uh, they met in high school? Your mom and dad met in high school? Yes, In sir. Altoona, right? Yeah, they were high school sweethearts. Yeah. So how old were they when they got married and how old 18. were they? When, wow. So Had when, when were you born? 1970. Had you at 18. Wow. So you are, so your dad is only about 70, right? Correct. 
Yeah. Yeah. Wow. When did he retire from coaching? He retired, I want to say it was four years ago. Okay. Um, too early, let right. me say that. Hmm. You know, it was kind of like mom was retired and tired of being retired alone. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, I think he, he probably still had four or five years left in him, and he's helping us. Um, you know, he came up, I don't know if you remember, he, he came up my first week mm-hmm. and spent 10 days and just, you know, watching, evaluating the tech film, evaluating quarterbacks, uh, wide receivers just kind of helped with a lot of stuff that first week, first 10 days. So, but uh, he's still, you know, he's still involved and, uh, you know, kind of helping us with a couple of things. Well, growing up in a coach's uh, household like that, so you've lived in places like Lexington and Wheeling and Beckley, I believe, places like that. Beckley, if, an, yeah. if a stranger came up and said, where are you from? What would you say? Well, I get that question a lot. And, um, uh, you know, to be honest, it's usually not a clean answer. You have to kind of explain. And I was born in Pennsylvania. I grew up mostly in West Virginia and went to high school in Virginia. Um, so, you know, you move around a bunch. And we were never anywhere in, in, my, in my adolescence. Uh, the longest we were anywhere was three years. And that was my high wow. school experience mm-hmm. in Lexington. So, but... Um, you know, so it also, you know, if if if, uh, if I'm coaching at Penn State, the uh, the bio says I'm from Pennsylvania. If I'm coaching <laughs> right, at Virginia right. Tech, the bio says I'm from Virginia. Right, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. But all those places are pretty similar. Yeah, overall, yeah, right? that neck of the woods. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, just for my own curiosity, you know, my wife's from Indiana, Indiana, PA, which mm-hmm. is like an hour from Altoona. How old were you when your parents moved out of Altoona? Do you remember it at all? I don't. We were young. We moved yeah. to a married student housing at Marshall, uh, you know, the year after the crash. Yeah. Dad was a quarterback there. and But uh, I know a lot about Indiana, PA, because our head coach at East Stroudsburg University, Dennis Dowds, was from Indiana, PA. Do you know who else is from Indiana, PA, or who went to school at uh, IUP? Jim Hazlitt. And John Belen, pretty sure That's John correct. Belen, John Belen did as well. Pay. Not near as famous as Jim Haslett or <laughs> yeah, Danny Dow. That's correct. It's remarkable the number of people that are from Indiana, PA, yeah. and and or went to town. IUP. That's right. Yeah, it you is. Know. And you think about the Signatis as well. You know? Right. So, we, so I want I want to ask you this, and actually, I know this because I think I saw you drive up out in the parking lot. When you when when you get the big whistle salary, I always want to know. <laughs> Everybody buys a house, of course. I'd go car shopping first thing. Yeah. Are you a car guy? Like, what are you driving right now? Uh, I mean, making what you're making, you could pretty much buy whatever you wanted to. So David Hagen and those guys over at Sheeler, uh, that's my dealer car I pulled up in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate because I'm a, I'm a Chevy guy. I'm a Tahoe guy. And uh, they were good enough to put me in a, in a Chevy Tahoe high country. And I don't think I'd want to drive anything else. So, uh, you know, I, I like a bigger rig, you know, yeah. and, and uh, but uh, it's it's awesome. Now, my wife, you know, she's got other taste. Uh, Chevy's not, it's well, I'm not, not for her now. Well, you, Chris, uh, Chris drives a Mustang. So. Well, I was going to say, have you given, as a Chevy guy, have you given Malachi, Malachi Thomas any anything about his Ford <laughs> yeah. before he's got it? Yeah. <laughs> so, I was so, just happy for him. So yeah. let's fill in the blanks. For those that don't know, Malachi Thomas has an NIL deal where he's driving a Ranger, is Ford it? Ranger. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That was good. Good. Uh, we got some people that helped him out with that. And, you know, hopefully I, we'll have a few more of those deals coming down the pipe here. So what was uh, what was the car you learned to drive on? Dodge Colt. I'm sorry. I don't even know what that <laughs> Dodge is. Dodge Colt. Had the turbo uh, shifter, uh, you know, a little four-cylinder. I think we paid 900 bucks for it. It was pumpkin orange. <laughs> and uh, I think it would max out at about 50 miles per hour. So what year was it? Do you remember? Uh, you know, so that was in 85 that I learned to drive it. And I think it was a... It might have been like a 76 Dodge Colt. Man. Yeah. Then I upgraded. my One of my favorite vehicles uh, was a Triumph TR7. A buddy of mine had one of those. Those are the, the slanted ones, right? Yes, Do you remember the commercial? It's not the TR6. It's, not the, it's the TR7. Do you remember the commercials for the TR7? I do not. Um, 
that you may be a little bit young for that because I'm five years older than you, but they got that wedge shape to them. Correct. And they had a guy driving around in one, and he pulled into a garage that was shaped like a wedge. Oh, wow. And the tagline <laughs> was Triumph TR7, the shape of things to come. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I don't think they, they didn't quite make it that big, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed mine. I had a couple, you know, a couple years and then threw a rod going over the mountain from Lynchburg, and it was done. Yeah. You were a uh, all region quarterback at Lexington High School. Thank you for bringing that you up. Were, and yeah, defensive you. back. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was, you played there from what, probably 86, 88, somewhere Correct. around there? Correct. Okay. 86, 87, okay. and, uh, excuse me, 85, 86, 87. Okay. Yeah. Um, would, would you have played? 15 for 15, 225 yards, two touchdowns. Rockbridge County Player of the Week. Wow. I was waiting for you to say that next. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't quite got down the research ladder. True that story, is, though. Y'all threw, two, y'all threw the, the ball 15 two times of the past in a plays game? were to Anthony Booby Merchant, if you remember that name. Mm-hmm. Because if, if I remember right, he ended up at Virginia Tech. He was a tailback. Really? Two of the passes were slip screens to Anthony. One went for like 40 and one went for like 60. So nice. it, uh, I'm just surprised that a coach decided to throw the ball 15 times in a game in, in <laughs> Southwest Virginia in the 1980s. Yeah, right. It doesn't yeah. happen very often. Yeah. Um, would Okay, so besides Merchant, would, did you play – with or against anybody that like tech fans from that era would would remember? Oh geez, not that I remember. Okay, you know Anthony was a big name. He was a year younger than me, and um, super talented. Uh, I'd, I'd have to look it up. I think Anthony came to Tech. I'm not sure how it ended up, but uh, he was a pretty highly recruited guy. Mm-hmm. What's the name again? Anthony Merchant. M E R C H A N T. Yes, sir. All right, I'm googling. Oh, googling. He would have been an '89 graduate. Okay. Of Lexington High School. Okay, so we'd have been class of '89. While while Will looks that up, you know, part of your coaching career was obviously spent at Vanderbilt. Had yeah. some good years there under James Franklin. As a live music guy, part of you has to miss coaching at Vanderbilt. Oh, there's a lot to miss about Nashville. I yeah. mean, we love we love Blacksburg, but. Um, you know, the transition for everybody, especially the wives, when you go from Nashville to State College, PA, they uh-huh. were kind of, it was like a culture shock. Um, you know, Nashville's got a lot to offer. But uh, I'm a, I am a live music guy. And I tell you, one of the first experiences was we were in a temporary hotel when we first got hired. And it's the Holiday Inn right off Vanderbilt's campus. And they had open mic night six nights a week. And there were five bar stools set up on the stage. And they'd bring five musicians out. Each one of them would get two songs. They would leave the stage. They'd bring the next five out. And that would go on for hours, six nights a week. Wow. And, I mean, there'd be one in every group. You'd go, how do they not have a record contract? They're right. fantastic. Like, you know, all these aspiring musicians just slinging it out and, you know, giving it their best it's shot. Competition. Really, oh, it was awesome, them. man. But uh, yeah, you could you can go downtown Nashville just about any day and any hour of the day and and find some good listening music. Mm-hmm. Once you got over your initial disappointment that uh, South Main Cafe no longer exists, <laughs> did I tell you that already? You, you did, yeah. Uh, what's the new hangout in Blacksburg? Still looking for it. Yeah, you know, um, we get, you know we've got a couple of bands that uh, that I'm partial to you know, kind of a regional type band that would love to come. And so if anybody's got the right venue out there, we've got some bands that we can court to get in here and and have some fun with. So you are reportedly a big uh, Almond Brothers fan. Is that, is that uh, for better, for lack of way to phrase, is that true or is that just something you said once upon a time to a reporter and it kind of took on a life of its own? I'm Are glad you? you asked that because I definitely want to clarify that I am a diehard Almond Brothers fan. Diehard. Since I was 17 years old. And I've probably seen them play live maybe 50 times. Uh, okay, that's a legit fan. That's yeah. a legit fan. Yeah. Uh, Traveled. You know, to Chicago, Indianapolis, you all would, over the East Coast to see these guys. You would remember Jeff Holland. 
Sure. Right. He's a huge Metallica fan. Yeah. And he's played, he's seen them like. He's seen over 100 Over 100 Metallica concerts. Jeff his, was always like a cent. I mean, he his, was his, out there, they, man. They put, they put him on stage one time. His, oh, his Twitter header is him on stage banging the, like the Metallica drum set <laughs> during a concert. That does not surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. He's really? probably watching, he, he'll probably watch this later. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen him a couple podcast. times recently. He's been around. I, yeah. did, I forgot. Now that you say that, I remember he was a big Metallica guy. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm going to ask you a trivia question. Um, let's see, the Almond the Almond Brothers band specifically. And, and the by band. the way, it's A L L M A N. Yeah, Unlike not like my Almond. daughters. Yeah, they the, the rich almonds. Correct. Yeah, uh-huh. That's what yeah. you know. What, <laughs> so the not Almond, a candy bar people. <laughs> the the Almond Brothers band, not to include you know Greg doing stuff on his own or, uh-huh. or whatever, had three top forty hits according to the Billboard Top 100. Pop quiz, what were they? Oh, Ramblin' Man, for right. sure. That was number two in 1973. Um, I think the other two are probably hard to get. I would say, uh, let's see, Ramblin' Man, Whippin' Post? No, but that was a, a outside the top yeah. 40 chart. Blue Sky? Nope. Hmm. Crazy Love? Oh, man, that's a good song. 1979, that got to number 29. That's and the, surprising. And the other one is from 1981 and got to number 39. Um, Southbound? Straight from the heart. Straight from the heart. Yeah, that's that's a that's not a real popular song nowadays, yeah. but uh, it's a good song. Did did not mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, I think so. that's the Arista years. Those those records didn't do real well, to be honest. Hmm. So <laughs> so Greg on his own did Midnight Rider, which is number nineteen in nineteen seventy three. Well, I was going to say that because of, you know that became part of their set list. Yeah, as the Almond Brothers, it was his song. And I think I probably that, thought it was the Almond Brothers. Yeah, and, and most people God. do. Yeah. And and a Greg Almond song I really like is I'm No Angel. Oh, it came out in 1987. I love that song, and it, it, it only made it to number 49. I thought it was a bigger yeah. hit than that. So, yeah. what do you got next, Chris? Uh, you big movie guy, book guy. We're going to get into TV some movie show. stuff. Uh, I don't watch TV, really. Mm-hmm. If yeah. I do, it's uh, something with the girls or um, HGTV with my wife. <laughs> um, I, I've only watched two kind of Netflix series, uh, Penny Dreadful, which I don't think I've finished that. I did enjoy it, and I'm just currently on season three of Ozark, uh, which has been pretty good. I love that um, show. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so not a lot of TV. Um, I, I do like to read. It's usually pleasure reading, mm-hmm. and I do it at night, uh, kind of, you know, or if I do it on vacation, and you know that type of thing. But I do like to read. I'm a I'm a history major. I was a history major. Yeah. I probably got. Oh, we're about I'm, to lose the podcast. We're about to lose the podcast. So I'm like a military. I, I've got, I like to call it like the best private library of history. Oh, well, we have house. to compare yeah. because okay. I've kept I've, every history really? book I've ever okay. acquired yeah. back Well, to your house family. is bigger than his. So. Yeah, so you've got more potential there than me. Early you know. American? Uh, yeah, I'm anywhere from early American up to World War II. I'm a military history, okay, mostly that type. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of history are you interested in? Early American. Yeah. You yeah. know, Washington, Lincoln, yeah. Jefferson. I've got I mean, probably three. Civil f- War. Uh, I've got three or four Washington biographies yeah. that are quite good. I'm in the middle of the Hamilton biography right oh, now. Good. It's yeah. quite good. Yeah. yeah. What's the most impressive book you've ever read? Like a, like a book that people are like, wow, you read that? Do you Greg have one Alms, like Greg Alms biography? <laughs> <laughs> Honest to goodness. Uh, I, I, I actually read Atlas Shrugged. Oh, my goodness. It's like 800 pages long. I tried to read War and Peace one time, got 200 pages yeah. into it, and just... Ugh. I read The Odyssey, uh, The Iliad. And, yeah. yeah, that was, that's been forever, but I did labor through those. Yeah, I read those in college. Yeah. Uh, it was, like you said, labor's the right word. So, uh, fair amount of book reading, um, not a lot of TV. What about movies? Uh, yeah, we like to go to the movies, and, and we watch movies as a family, usually. Yeah. You know, it's always the decision, are we watching a family movie with the girls, or a mom and dad watching a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we do like to watch movies, and we like to go to the movies. So what was what's your what would you if somebody asked you what your favorite movie of all time is? What is it? Pulp Fiction. Okay, I was going to ask you for some quotes from movies. Uh, I'll mark that one off the list. <laughs> Say what again? <laughs> <laughs> so no no hesitation. Pulp Fiction. I, that, I mean that's you know it's been my answer for years. It's just uh, one that I enjoy and I always watch. 
Um, if it's on, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna dial it in. Yeah, uh, I like to kill Bill stuff. Um, it's a big Tarantino fan, then. Huh? I am. Yeah. I like his stuff. Yeah, his stuff is is good. Yeah, he's unique. You ever see Risky Business? Yeah, I loved it. That's that's my favorite movie of all time. I bet that's a lot of people's. That's a good movie. Yeah, uh, so it came out in uh, 82 or 83. I think I was a senior in high school. And there is a 2004 movie called The Girl Next Door that is essentially a remake of Risky Business. Wow, I think I've seen that. Act. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we won't drill down into that mine, one too much. Mine is Last of the Mohicans, early American. That's a good one, That's too. Good one, yeah. yeah. So I want to list to you the uh, – I wanted to play this game with you. I'm going to list to you the top – 10 movies of all time. You guys time. weren't playing. This was the uh, <laughs> Yeah, no football, fun man. session, yeah. yeah. So box office, and, and I'm going to list them by box office revenue. I want you to tell me if you've seen them, and you too, so let, let's okay. count. So uh, Avatar, have you seen Avatar? Loved it. Really? Yeah, and often enough, you, you'll hear around the office, I'll say, oh my gosh, that guy looks like a freaking Avatar. <laughs> you know? Well, you see a good-looking recruit, you're like, oh my gosh. He's an Avatar. Well, I'm going to start using like, that Dude, one. you look like an Avatar, man. <laughs> I thought Avatars were skinny, though. Lean. Lean. Lean, yeah. okay. But muscular, long, you know, really can develop. See, I love that movie. See, that's interesting because another question I'm, I, th- I was thinking about asking you later is, what's a movie everyone has seen and talks about that you have never seen and have no interest in seeing? Mm. For me, it's Avatar. <laughs> never seen it, have no interest in it. I saw it once. Well, maybe I'll see it's, it now. They're, I, I tell they're, you they're making I, a sequel soon. Yep. I think I've said otherwise, but honest to goodness, I never saw Rudy. Really? Not from start to finish. I've never watched it from start it's, to finish. It's, it's, I've seen like pieces, but I never sat it's, down. And I, it's it. one of my favorite movies. It's, it's my favorite, it's for it's my favorite football movie. Yeah. And they expect, you know, they're like, oh, <laughs> what about Rudy? What about, you know, and to be honest, I like the, uh, you know, my wife's a Cajun. So the Adam Sandler movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Waterboy. Waterboy. Absolutely. That's one of my favorite. <laughs> that's, <great one. laughs> that's generally my answer for favorite football movie. Uh, number two, Avengers Endgame. Endgame. Have you seen it? Yes. Yeah, so my 20-year-old is a big Marvel Comics kind of, and uh, so we get into those. So, yes, Avengers, Endgame, saw it. Titanic, you ever see Titanic? Oh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, uh, I remember when that came out. That was that was really Ooh, incredible what, what they movie. did with that. Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens, 2015. Yeah, no, I, I... I think I saw it, but I'm not a, as big a Star Wars guy as I thought. I, I, my favorite Star Wars movie was was the knockoff, the uh, oh uh, Spaceballs. No, not space. Not not, not, <laughs> That's a, a good not the comedy. Uh, the the one where they the, about the Death Star, uh, where they oh uh, Rogue One. Yeah, that's yeah. my favorite Star Wars. That movie. is never heard of it. Good, good choice. Yeah. yeah, never heard of it. Oh, David's a big, uh, He's Star, a big Star Wars. Wars guy. Oh, is he? Dave, David, David follows this Twitter account. Uh, what's it called? Star Wars frame by frame? Shot by shot. shot, by shot. Mm. And every day they tweet out, is it the, is it the entire Star Wars? Yeah, they just go movie by movie. Movie yeah. by movie. So like every time they cut to a different camera angle, they, they do a screen cap of it. Oh, that's pretty cool. So Twitter's always telling me David Cunningham liked and it'll be some <laughs> some random Star Wars show. I had, you know, all the figurines and the Millennium Falcon yeah. and the Did you really? The Land Speeder. Oh, that was the big collector deal when I was yeah. growing up. Um, you know, then if you could get a hold of Yoda, you know, he was the hard to get one. <laughs> Did you ever do Star Wars Lego? You build any Star Wars Lego? No. 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 That, that's some time consuming stuff. Uh, so uh, Avengers Infinity War. Probably. Probably, yeah. Spider-Man No Way Home. Which one was that? 2021, so real recent. Um, that was more recent. Yeah. Spider-Man. I don't know. Maybe so. We like Spider-Man in our house. We, we generally watch those. I've, I've got a pretty impressive collection of Spider-Man comics. Is that right? Um, so Jurassic World. Yeah, uh, like those movies too. Yep, saw it. The Lion King is actually number eight on this list. Have you seen The Lion King? Absolutely. Well, the original? Or? The original. Okay. You got 11 yeah. and 13 year old dogs. No, no. You know what? It's it's labeled 2019. Yeah, there's so no way the original made that. It's the live money. action yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So the Avengers, the original Avengers from 2012. And number 10 is Furious 7. Ooh. Really? I've never seen any of them. I saw like the first two. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen several of those. Good stuff. All right. So, movie court, tell me what movie it's from. This is horrible, this idea. 
This is horrible, this idea. No clue. Ooh. I wish my oh, brothers were oh, here. Office <laughs> Space. Yes, yeah, Office oh, Space. Really? It's, yeah. it's the jump to conclusions, Matt. So have you ever seen Office Space? I can't remember. I think so. It's about 20 years old. You never worked in a cubicle, did you? No. Yeah, you probably wouldn't find it as funny. My first yeah. seven years of, of working life were in a cubicle, and it's it's a hilarious movie. So I'm kind of I'm kind of dominating the conversation here. You got any more for him, Chris? I've asked all my questions, oh, and man. I think we're just about coming up on thirty minutes. Anyway. We are on twenty five, so oh, we got a little okay. bit of time. Yeah. David, what do you shout out a question you wanted to ask? Oh, uh, uh, favorite place to eat black people. favorite place to eat in Blacksburg. I hate to right hurt anybody's now. feelings. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got some some places I still need to check out, but yeah, I do like six twenty two North. Sitting back in the wine room, you get great service back there. What's your wife's favorite place? Wife's favorite place. I'm repeating things because David doesn't have a mic. Wife's favorite place to eat. She would say the farmhouse because she is, I mean, she'll order a filet every single time she can. Yeah. So do I you like the farmhouse too. Do you remember Strong Blacksburg Tavern? It's a good place. That's is that right for a steak? No, not for a steak. It's, it's it's like I haven't been in there. It's yet. like a country cooking, for lack of a better word. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. it's all vegetables and meats and things like. Honestly, that. Honestly, I love really to go good. into Slovakia yeah. lunch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always enjoy that. Um, do you remember when Six Twenty Two North was called Bogans? Were you yes, here? Yes, it was Bogans yeah, we were, when yeah. I was here. Yeah that that was that was the big yeah. uh, hangout when I was in college. We'd go up there and. People would leave without paying their share of the bill, and if you wanted the last few at the table, man, you were yeah. you were man. They got up. a bacon jam crustini. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, good app. Yeah, I haven't been there a while. I have to do that. All right, uh, movie line. What movie is this? What we have here is a failure to communicate. Oh my goodness, I've heard that. You've heard it. But I'm not good at this stuff. Yeah. So you're not. You're. I'm probably yeah, you're, not gonna, yeah, you're not making him cool. Look good cool here, hand, man. <laughs> cool hand, look, man. But my brothers, that's all they do is recite movie lines. They get going, and one's one part, and the, and the other brother's the other part, and they go back and forth. And I, and I'm like, I recognize the you know the dialogue, but I can never pin the movie. Uh, I, I think today's uh, today's kids yeah. in air quotes, twenty years from now, they're going to be talking memes to, back and forth <laughs> to each other. So what other sports do you like besides football? Like if you were going to sit down and watch a game of another sport, what would it be? To watch, uh, to participate, honestly, in high school, my favorite sport was wrestling. Mm. Really? Yeah, I loved wrestling. Um, probably would have done it in college if I was a little better at it. Um, but uh, I got a ton of respect for wrestlers, and I love watching wrestling. Um, do you get a chance to go see tech wrestle much? I haven't yet. Uh, I'm, you know, I was saw several Penn state matches over the years, Yeah, uh, but and you but saw I, some good wrestling. There. Boy, they're good. We did. And I, and I'm excited about tech wrestling, to be honest. I, I know those guys are doing a fantastic job and uh, I'm anxious. I wanted to go it just with my schedule. It didn't work out this year, but, uh, but I, you know, and, and lately I've been, you know, I enjoy watching, um, golf. I enjoy watching tennis. You know, Wimbledon's usually on while I'm on vacation, and I like to, you know, watch the finals. I was in London one time during Wimbledon. Yeah, and it's it's funny how they treat it over there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and then honestly, you know, I've enjoyed, you know, um, going back to David Hagen. Uh, his son Matt Hagen is a three-time national champion uh, drag racer, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he took me down to a drag race down in uh, Charlotte. Holy cow, I was fascinated. Uh, really impressed with that whole thing. And so I'm watching some of that nowadays. And Did you take your earplugs with you? It didn't matter. Oh, yeah, they were in. <laughs> they were if you in saw that video, them. it was bad. It looked like I got shot. The first time I heard that sucker go off. You're uh, going like this yeah. and duck it. Yeah. So what the, um, I don't have any pastimes or any talents. <laughs> do, do you like like what is a is a talent you have or something you've cultivated or hobbies or, or anything beyond football? Yeah, honestly, it's probably music. Yeah, um, I've got, you know, I, so when I talk about the Almond, I've got two gold records, uh, Almond Brothers in my house, uh, lots of artwork. Um, and, it, you know, it does go beyond the Almond Brothers. So when you say you've got the gold records. The actual gold, gold records, correct. So they were put up for sale. 
Correct. And, and you wound up yeah, with one of the Tell executives executives with Capricorn Records. Um sold him off, was going through a divorce. Wow. And uh, a buddy of mine, Sean Quinn, who's now on staff, yeah. mm-hmm. calls me up. He's down in Savannah or Charleston somewhere. I can't remember. He said, Pry, I'm in this house, and this guy's selling off several gold records. He's like, he's got two up here from the Allman Brothers. I'm like, how much? Let's go. <laughs> so, well, not to be too nosy, but do you remember what you paid for them? Um, I think they were 1500 bucks a piece. No. And, uh, that's that's for gold no, records. That's bad. I feel not like you bad. got a good deal on yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I felt yeah. like. You know, and the guy was, you know, he was he he, he needed to sell a few off. <laughs> but he did. we hit it at the right time. Because I know I wouldn't cut him loose for that. No, you know. So, so are they're legit gold? Ten k, fourteen k. I don't know how those things really work. I mean, you know, they look it to me. I mean, I'm a believer. <laughs> you know, they're in a nice frame. Never had an appraiser uh, over, but yeah, you know, it's cool. But so I, you know, music is a is a passion of mine i do enjoy golfing uh, golf to me is is fun uh, i'm not very good at it because i haven't done it a lot yeah um you know i like to dabble in the workouts i've reduced myself now i'm a band guy you know, oh, resistance yeah? bands people walk you could do office. a lot with those I mean, bands, I, in fact i could be in a meeting in my office and you know people are talking and i'm doing my band workout and <laughs> you know push-ups and uh, things like that so and then, you know, honestly, when you have young kids, I mean, it, it, it was always tough for me. And I'm not knocking anybody that does this, but if I had four or five hours that I would go to the golf course, I'm going to go home and, and hang with the girls, you know, yeah. or do something with my wife. Or, um, But uh, I just got a new set of golf clubs. Uh, the pro out at the club uh, fitted me and – I had my dad's hand-me-downs, his Palm Springs from like 30 years ago. With the little tiny driver heads yeah. and it's oh, hard yeah. to hit it straight. That's what I've been playing with for a long time. If you if you work for a head coach that doesn't play, chances are you're not playing much. Uh, you just – they don't think that way. You know, you don't get the time. and. So James Franklin uh, doesn't play? He did play. not play. Because yeah. Coach Beamer plays. Yes. Played, plays. Oh, I know. Future, past, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. You know, Ricky Bustle, who I went to work for at Louisiana Lafayette, I'll never forget, Ricky would take his clubs for spring recruiting, and he was a great recruiter, and he'd, he'd get all his schools done, you know, by a certain time, and then he played golf every <laughs> evening in the spring, whatever town he was in. Um, and he played a ton when we were in Louisiana. So, Carter, it's been a, it's been a half hour already. That was quick. Um, That's good, man. This is a good one. So what you're saying is you want to stay and keep going? <laughs> <laughs> we got another minute or two. Yeah. Um, now that's pretty much everything I had. I did wanted to get, get into the TV and, and, um, I, I skipped over one car question though. I'm, I'm betting since you had a TR seven, that the answer to this is yes. Can you drive a stick shift? Absolutely. When was the last time you drove one? I'm going to tell you, I had a, uh, when I, it's been a while when I took the job, when I took the job here in 1995, I had a 75 CJ7 with a Corvette engine in it, straight pipes. Oh, my gosh. I and it had a three-speed on the floor. Uh, <laughs> so that would have been the last one. But, uh, you know, obviously my TR7 was a f- five or six-speed. I can't remember. Uh, so so can, we have, can we have two more minutes? All but right. I've had a bunch of Jeeps now that I say that. We've got a 2005 Wrangler. There, yeah, there I've are had a lot three Wranglers. Yeah. In fact, my brother has my last one that I bought right here from Duncan. Uh, it was a five-speed. In fact, I gave my, my stepson a bunch of grief because he couldn't drive stick, and we wanted to get him. A, he wanted a Jeep. And I said, I'm not doing it if it's an automatic. I'm not buying an automatic Jeep. I'm sorry. Ours is an automatic. Well, <laughs> our, his is too. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. Between him and his mom, they were like, he doesn't need to learn how to drive a stick. Just get him an automatic. So You know what they call sticks today? They call them theft prevention devices. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like that watch. What, what brand of watch is that, and where'd you get it? Ah, you had to bring us first day wearing it. This is oh, yeah? a try me out. Yeah, try me out. A um, friend of ours has a jewelry shop down in on the Gulf Coast and sent it up to see if I liked it. I'm not a big watch guy. Let, let me see the face again. That's, he put that face on it just for me. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's not dark maroon, but it is maroon. Yeah, he wanted it to kind of be a Virginia Tech type deal, so 
He's got my interest, but it's got a nice price tag, so I don't know if I like it that much. <laughs> All right, we'll so, see. So big barbecue this weekend. Are you going to be the guy on the on the grill yourself? <laughs> I don't mind grilling, yeah. you know. And maybe I can get Coach Beamer down there. Probably. Right? Yeah, he's, he's pretty good at that, I hear. <laughs> All right, Coach, appreciate yep. you coming on. Yeah, for, awesome, guys. For a little half-hour session of Get to Know Coach Pry. Um, I, Carter, I'll be uh, requesting you after the football season. Yeah, when there'll perfect. Be, there'll be a lot to talk oh, about yeah. there. And we might I'm make a, that one five minutes. I know. <laughs> I'm going to put the request in early for an hour next time. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how the season goes. That's right. Area. And I'll even throw down the gauntlet. My, Mike Young was in here earlier this week. He was in here for an hour. <laughs> All right. Anyway, appreciate you coming on, yeah, Coach. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, and that it. has been episode, uh, what is that, 246 of wow. the Tech Sideline Podcast. We'll see you again soon.